Thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you, Robert, uh, in particular, for being here to introduce me. Uh, it means a great deal to me to have you here. And we obviously heard we have a number of Patriot fans in the house. And you know better than anyone, as owner of the Patriots, Robert Kraft has given this area and this region a lot to cheer for. We are all fortunate, all of us, to have him as an owner of a model franchise. And we are lucky to have him as a friend and a mentor to this commissioner. So thank you, Robert. First, let me uh, extend my congratulations to the class of 2010 and all of your families. This is an important day for all of you, and I thank you for allowing me to be a small part of it. On behalf of my brothers, thanks also to Chancellor Meehan for honoring our father. Whenever you think of Marty, you think of passion, energy, and leadership. That strikes you about Marty. He makes things better. And he has already done that here at Lowell, and I know he'll continue to make a difference. Thank you, Marty. As said before, today I'm here with my family in honor of my father. It is my mother, however, who would have been the happiest to see me standing here. She was worried, really worried, that I would never even graduate. And I'm talking about high school. <laughs> I was what they call a late bloomer. But my mother and father are the very reasons I stand before you today. You heard Chancellor Meehan speak about my father earlier and some of his accomplishments. And we are proud of his accomplishments and his legacy. Having the courage to stick to his principles and do what's right, regardless of the consequences. My father initially supported the war in Vietnam. He always supported our troops. This is particularly important to note this Memorial Day weekend, when we take the time to remember the sacrifices and contributions of our military throughout our history. But his views on the, goal, on the goals of the Vietnam War evolved and eventually changed because he listened. He spoke to many people, including many college students. Those voices had a tremendous influence on him. Your voice is important. So in preparing for today, I asked a group of your classmates what they thought would be most relevant for me to share with you today. And they told me. It was like a press conference. They were almost as good as many of my members in the media. Let me share with you, though, three questions the group thought would be most valuable for me to address today. First, how did you get started and develop your career? It is important to remember that I was sitting in your chair not too long ago, nervous and uncertain about my future. And it is very common at ceremonies such as this to tell graduates, dream and dream big. I say do more than that. When you dream, you're in an unconscious state. It ends. You wake up. It's not real. You need to create a vision. This takes determination and a plan that takes your dream to a destination. My dream was football. In fact, I slept with a football starting at age six a practice my wife just broke me up in the last few years. <laughs> my passion and vision was to work in the NFL, so I created that plan. I wrote more than 40 letters to the NFL, everybody. The results, as you heard earlier, a big pile of rejections. Some plan, huh? But I was determined and persistent and kept writing, and finally, there was a polite but somewhat dismissive reply from a weary executive 
at the NFL to, quote, stop by if you're in the area. So I told them, I'm in the area. I got in my car, I drove all night from Pittsburgh to New York, and I was on his doorstep the next morning. Six months later, and probably 12 or 13 letters later, they offered me a three-month internship. That executive looked at me 10 or 15 years later, and I asked him, why did you hire me? He said, I thought you were a nice guy. So it doesn't matter how you get in the door, just get in that door. It was supposed to be a one-season internship, but it was my opportunity to show what I could do. The lesson for you, as you develop your career, seize every opportunity and know that you will make a lot of mistakes. Tom Brady completes a lot of passes, but he also throws a lot of interceptions. I'm sorry to say that to you. <laughs> Many things, is Robert saying something over my shoulder I should be aware? <laughs> Many things aren't going to go as planned. The world is too complex to be known, so life is about navigating uncertainty. You have to be resilient, you have to adjust, and you have to be determined. You often make mistakes when you challenge yourself, but you need to do that. Don't let yourself get comfortable. Avoid the comfort zone. Being uncomfortable will motivate you and cause you to grow faster. I'm here today because I had a vision for my future. I seized those opportunities, made a lot of mistakes, and challenged myself. You can do the same. Second question, how do you make decisions? Some people ask me this frequently. A thoughtful process is critical to making good decisions. First comes good information. Get your facts straight. Because of technology, your world is much different than the world that I entered coming out of college. There is so much access to information. Your challenge is not the amount of information, but determining the credibility of that information and siphoning that information to help you make better decisions. Then, listen, and listen to many different viewpoints, especially to those who disagree. My father did. Get as much feedback as you can from a diverse group of people. Why? Because very simply, you do not have all the answers. No one does. You need humility and to understand that no one succeeds on their own. You must also resist the temptation to make premature decisions and be open to changing your position to find a better solution. It might not be solution A or solution B, but rather solution C, after a good process with discourse, dialogue, and some good thinking. If it is a better solution, it doesn't matter who it came from. This world needs a lot less finger pointing and a lot more solutions. We make decisions in the NFL all the time. Sometimes we force those decisions because we want to improve and not become complacent or comfortable. They call me relentless to the point my staff, my family, sometimes consider me a royal pain in the neck. But so be it. Much of what the commissioner does is resolve conflict. Many are tough decisions that come with a lot of criticism. But at the end of the day, the decision must be made, and it's about doing what is right. The third question, what do you wish someone had told you when you had graduated? I don't remember who spoke at my graduation or what that person said, and you probably won't either. But here is something for you all to remember. Your education is not over. It's just the beginning. 
And don't take that as bad news. You have learned how to learn, and now you must strive to learn all of your life. Learn especially how to work with people and develop the respect and relationships that are necessary for success. Teamwork is essential to success. It certainly is in the NFL. Also, embrace change. As daunting and as uncomfortable as change can be, do not resist it. I am fortunate that I have spent most of my career in the NFL, but I've worked in many different areas and challenged myself to do many different things and to learn many different things. I'm still doing that. I have been studying medical issues the past few years in ways I never imagined or dreamed I could do because of our priority on providing the best possible care for our players' health and safety. And of course, technology has changed my life just as it's changed all of yours. Just a couple of years ago, I didn't even know how to Google. I had my twin girls teaching me how to Google. Now they're teaching me how to use my iPad. The world changes and they're leading the way, and so will you. And as Robert said, last year I climbed a mountain, probably for the last time. Next year, I will gladly cut that check for $400,000, Robert. <laughs> Our country is facing very difficult economic times, and the job market is tough. You know that better than any. If possible, though, I ask you to focus on the best job opportunity that will provide the challenges and valuable experience that you will need, and on people you enjoy working with that will mentor you and help you develop. I'm grateful to you, the students, who came up with these questions, and I hope the answers were as good as the questions. Let me share with you two lines which my father wrote to me shortly after graduating from college. In expressing my appreciation to my parents, I wrote in 1981 to my father, 1981, if there's one thing I want to accomplish in life besides becoming commissioner of the NFL, it is to make you proud of me. I told you I had a vision. In a letter back to me, my father wrote, feel your own pressure your own is sufficient. You, as graduates, should do the same. Create your own, create your own pressure. As you start this next jersey, jersey, journey, there will be many people pulling you one way and pushing you another. It is important to listen to those voices, but remember, listen to yourself. For the family and friends of the graduates here, Know that you can make a big difference with your words of support and encouragement. My father listened to others, felt his own pressures, stood up for what he believed in, and failed in a very public way. He lost his reelection, he lost his political career, he loved so very dearly. But what did he retain? something much bigger. His principles, his integrity, his character, and he established an important legacy. As you build your legacy, it will be determined not by what you do, but how you do it. Have the courage to do what you believe in. Do it well and do it with everything you've got. Congratulations to you, the class of 2010. Let your voice be heard and go make a difference. Thank you.